Alrighty, so what's up boys? Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we got another reaction and it's going to be CoffeeZilla investigating Mr. Beast. So we're going to see, um, you guys already know CoffeeZilla goes really deep into these really big deep dives into his investigation and stuff like that. He does a lot of fact checking and of course he says when there's allegations or actually allegations instead of just, you know, saying that it's true. So I think he's a pretty credible source when it comes to uh, getting, you know, source uh, material and stuff like that. And for investigation specifically as well, at least for YouTube journalism, uh, as far as that goes. But anyways, boys, if you guys enjoyed today's video, don't forget to drop a like and sub. Here's our YouTube comment shout out. Let's go ahead and get into it, guys. Let's try this again. I investigated Mr. Beast, who was recently accused of making $23 million with All right, boys, we're going to speed run this one. No pauses, because this shit is already 25 from minutes. From researchers to crypto projects, even it, to Mr. Beast himself. And let me say, the story is more complicated than you think. I want right. to be clear. What Mr. Beast did, what his team did, is shady. But what we care about is, did he cross that bright red line from shady to a legal scam? And man. contrary to what Twitter says, I don't know what to see, I think man. that's an easy answer. Instead, I think the answer will depend on you. If you love Mr. Beast, there will be an explanation at every turn and a scapegoat. But if you hate Mr. Beast, what I'm about to show you will seem unethical and like a clear abuse of fame for money. So already, the yeah, story people is just different. have to see, but man, because I, I mean, it, of two Mr. Beast is matter. First, quite the character. I have gone to Mr. Beast's team to try to fact check the story extensively, and they declined to fact check or comment on my many questions. Instead, they gave me a statement, which we will get to. Secondly, I have oh, a bit okay. of history so we got a Mr. statement from Mr. Beast. Okay. And spoke positively about him in the past, but also his new co-founder is suing me, and his other co-founder threatened to sue me. So you can make of that what you will. As always, yeah, I just yikes. want to let you know where I'm coming from, weird. and I've tried to so get all sides of weird. the story. <laughs> yeah, I don't think uh, anybody really respects him for trying to fucking sue well, for dumb, you know, dumb shit. We're going to start with stupid. the major allegations against Mr. Beast and build on those. They right. come from two sources. Firstly, an investigation by Soma XBT, which claims so is this gonna Mr. Be going Beast to the made $2 million dollars by backing low-cap oh, crypto tokens, which are down 90%. And the second investigation comes from a group of five people who investigated Mr. Beast. And found $23 million in profits from quote Damn. Scams, shady deals. 23 and million? His network. Holy now, shit. There are a lot of people. Bro, wanna slap me a quick mill real quick? And I wanna be clear. No, I'm just Some of these allegations. Nah, he's I making that money off of scamming. You can Others, keep that shit to yourself. are actually worse than have been reported. And still other allegations I simply disagree with them on. So we're gonna start with what I don't agree with. According right. to the report, Polychain Monsters, or PMON, is a project which KSI promoted heavily. Mr. Beast did not. But Mr. Beast did get in the presale and make a lot of money. And thus, the conclusion is made, it's highly likely Mr. Beast made an investment from that insider information of KSI's promotional deal. Mm. But okay, yeah, well, I mean, that no does make sense, but... This. I had the same thoughts about... I think common sense-wise it makes sense, but yeah, like you said, there's no actual and evidence of it, so... Is, though Mr. Beast did not officially follow Jigstack, in his network, KSI was involved in promoting Jigstack from this information, mm. Mr. Beast invested and made a large. Return. So it's possible. Here, again, very there possible. Isn't but there's proof. no now, way of the team who wrote it, this yeah. piece and the lead author, Casper Vandeluk, told me, "Quote: Having known Mr. Beast's having a very strong connection with KSI, it's basically highly probable he was vested as a result of KSI. No concrete evidence, just going off probabilities. But I'm gonna say I don't agree with that, and I'm gonna toss those probabilities aside. I think they reach too far." Instead, I'm going to stick with what we can prove happened. Luckily, the biggest claims in this report, the biggest money makers, are much better supported by evidence. Starting with Super. This is the project Mr. Beast is alleged to have made the most amount of money on, over $10 million based so on this another, uh, of $100,000. Okay. As for evidence, we have leaked screenshots showing Mr. Beast telling Super's founder that he can do 100 k Then we have a wallet oh. that both investigations... Hey, why is Lachlan in there? Oh. Is that a separate tweet? I hope that was... Wallet. And then we have the same wallets getting millions of these super tokens in a period of unlocks, which oh were almost all sold aggressively. Now, why is this bad? Well, Mr. Beast is obviously hugely influential, and he publicly associated himself with the project twice. Once on March 3rd, 2021, he responded to a tweet with eyeball emojis, 
And then he interacted a second time on May 12th, 2021. This is much worse. The founder, Elio Trades, had tweeted, there's a gym sitting there on the market at eye-watering prices set to explode. And Mr. Beast is adding comments on Mr. it instead Beast's too. Response, Super? But what he doesn't say is that he'd already purchased a huge stake in Super at this point, And on the day that he's tweeting, he was selling tokens, allegedly. Not only that, he- So he was promoting it while he was selling. Sell that is in crazy. In the 72 hours after the May 12th tweet, Mr. Beast sold about $200,000 worth of these tokens. Holy and remember the shit. Context. He's responding to the founder of the coin. He's pumping and dumping. A you wait until later in the day after he promoted it. All of you will put the money in. During the summer. Drop and it Mr. Down. Beast's response is the coin he's selling. So publicly, it's signaling, hey, super is this undervalued coin. And privately, Mr. Beast allegedly sold. Now, I ran these wallets by Mr. Beast, as well as the accusation, but I didn't get a reply. Instead, I got a heavily lawyered statement from a spokesman who I'm going to warn you is about to complicate things. Quote, uh, well. these investments were made and managed in consultation with industry experts to ensure full compliance with all appropriate rules and regulations. Okay. The wallet is not owned or managed by Jimmy, but rather a fund led by respected and sophisticated managers the fund closely evaluated and scrutinized hundreds and hundreds of opportunities, which resulted in several investments. Some have been more successful, others less, and others still works in progress. The fund's investment strategies apply the same rigorous standards as many other experienced investors in the field. So you might have just hired people? Of questions. Want to break into cybersecurity? Sounds like he might have just hired people to make wallets for him, but the fact that he's saying that he doesn't own it is kind of weird because they're but saying the that they... Is Jimmy denies doing any of the trading or managing the trading and puts right. it on a fund. So I asked some obvious follow-up questions. What is the name of this fund? Who are the industry experts? And what rules and regulations? Right, that's what I'm thinking. Like, if it has nothing to do with it, coin while your fund is selling. I didn't get a response. It's worth mentioning the uh, spokesman is Matthew Hiltzik, a well-known crisis management consultant. Thankfully, online, there still are a number of clues we can follow to try to find the right person for this fund. The reason most people link Mr. Beast to this wallet we've been tracking is mostly based on a tweet by Mr. Beast saying he bought a specific crypto punk, which belonged to an account which mm. goes by Wu Tang Clan. People assumed, understandably, that this was Mr. Beast's wallet. But what is lesser known is that another account has also tweeted about crypto punks and has the same ties back to Wu Tang Clan. And maybe it's who actually Jason manages it? Williams. He's followed by Mr. Beast on Twitter, and he's the author of a book on Bitcoin, so he's a crypto guy. And I found Jason tweeting about another crypto punk saying, I hope you enjoy your new home sold for 100 ETH. That sale he's talking about links back to the same address Mr. Beast does, Wu Tang Clan. On YouTube, oh. there's even more clues. Jason it's under Mr. Beast, but he's not managing it. Shirt, that makes sense. And his brand name, Going Parabolic, happens to be owned by the same Mr. Beast wallet, GoingParabolic.eth. So there's very good evidence that Jason Williams was also involved in this same wallet, which means that it might be true that Mr. Beast wasn't the guy buying or selling, which would yeah, be, it could be completely Mr. Innocent, and yeah. bad for these investigations. But just when I thought Mr. Beast might have no say in what oh, this shit. wallet did, I saw but... this podcast with Logan go. Hall, where Jimmy discusses go and learn some shit, once boys. again, and <laughs> things get complicated. I also, so me and Logan both bought punks. You guys have probably seen on his Twitter that uh, he bought a bunch of crypto punks at the same time, right? Yep. Gary pulled us yep. in that call. Yep. So have you ever told that story? Oh, like, Gary that's Lee, right. It's like 11 p.m. Just out of nowhere, just calls me. And he's like, yo, I, I got like 30 people to call Hop in. I'm like, okay, I don't care. I don't care. He's like, it'll be the best decision of your life. Just get in. I was yeah. like, okay. But he and said so it I on a podcast. What an idiot. Like Logan and I, I All he had to do was say nothing. Every heavy hitter you can imagine exactly. who's worth a billion dollars was on this one call, and Gary V is in the little corner, the little square. Yeah. He's, going, he's going, crypto punks. It's gonna be huge. It's gonna be the next Facebook. We're all of us. We're like, okay, Everyone's Gary. Judging. I'm texting Logan. He's I'm like, like, is this, is this legit? <laughs> For all of us, we're like, yo, Gary's nuts. Yo, Gary was right again. Yeah, I bought a bunch. I wait, mean, wait, wait. Yeah, I bought quite a few. Oh, man. Uh, I, I don't want to say, but you I, have to no, say, please. I, I've, I've, I bought multiple ones. Yeah. Well, bro, uh -huh. are you double digits, punks? Uh, double, just shy. Huh. Well, okay. This clip so he definitely got some interesting on his own. Jimmy said he made the decision to get CryptoPunks based on a call with Gary Vee. 
Right. But those punks are owned by the wallet we just said was controlled by Jason. So it appears sometimes Mr. Beast is telling Jason what to buy for this fund. Mr. Beast then later talks about selling these crypto punks and rolling the money into a new project. And once again, it sounds like he's in charge. Well, I've, I've already sold quite a few of them. So I don't, I don't, I don't yeah, know. that's another thing. And he's in charge of selling them or some of them. I bought a bunch of, so then I rolled the money into V friends because I Gary, same thing, called me. He's like, V friends. I was like, I don't know, but last time I made money, so sure. I'll be honest. Dude, these that one podcast me, really screwed it him. It's difficult to assume Mr. Beast had no idea what's going on. He talks about CryptoPunks and VFriends like personal investments. Right. And on Twitter, he says that not only he bought CryptoPunks, he also tweets about loading up on VFriends. But again, I have to say, it is also abundantly clear Jason Williams was involved. He says, hey, Gary, thanks for the VFriends gift code. It was a gift from Gary to Mr. Beast. I'm very thankful for it. He didn't have to send anything. So once again, Jason Williams appears to be involved and have something to do with the trading or management of Mr. Beast's crypto wallet, but we know Mr. Beast made some of the decisions. So of course, I asked Mr. Beast to explain himself if he had any say over the trading, but once again, there's no response. So now I wanna turn back to Super. We know from leaked DMs that Mr. Okay, Beast well. and not Jason set up this pre-sale, and we know that Mr. Oh, Beast made, made a tweet, tweet about it too, so man. We have to Come guess. on. Here's what we know. We know Mr. Beast okay. set up the pre-sell according to leaked screenshots. We know Mr. Beast made the tweet, but we don't know whether it was Jason doing the trading of Super or if Mr. he was Beast. doing the trading, did Mr. Beast know about it? Did Jason know about That's the That's the main tweet? problem is we don't know because he could have told them whichever matter, one. And yes, I reached out to Jason Williams. But he also confirmed that he sold. He didn't reply. I did, however, get a hold of Elio Trades. Are you kidding the founder me? Founder oh. of Super. They love my cat bush. He gets Mr. Beast's tweet was not a part of a deal for promotion. But you should know he also mentions how upset he was with how pre-sale investors sold their tokens, saying most of them sold, including Mr. Beast. So those are the facts. Mr. Beast gets involved in a pre-sale. There's for not some reason, cord, sir. at this my project twice. One time on the day his fund is selling tokens, where he seems to imply that they're undervalued. In total, he's alleged to have made $11 million with this deal, according to the report. Right. Uh, so yeah, that, that's really bad. Now we're going to turn to another allegation, which is about Earn or Eternity Chain. There are some facts what the hell the is this? There are others that are different. For example, like instead that, uh, of Mr. Beast... I don't know what, what it is, directly, what it's supposed to mean. The team at Earn claims hey, they never cat. spoke to Mr. Beast. Quote, we were speaking to his fund manager. And when I asked about these wallets selling allegedly over $4 million in tokens, they say, quote, Mr. Uh, Beast's fund was an early investor in our pre-sale. He had the same unlock schedule as everyone else. Were we happy with the way he sold? Definitely not. But legally, there was nothing we could have done. And then, just like with Super, they claim they didn't ask for a promotion of the project, but that Mr. Beast decided to comment once himself anyways. On March 9th, 2021, Mr. Beast well, responds then. to a Thirty Chain saying, "This one." So he's definitely a part, part of it. Noting, once again, Anytime they put those little emojis and this, all that talking about the whatever the post is, is over a hundred thousand hey, dollars of man. earn tokens. You already know. In addition to the presale, now what is different about Super is that Mr. Beast's name was put publicly on the Eternity Chain website. On their investors and partners page, you might be asking, well, which is it? Is he an investor or a partner? And the answer is both. He got into the free sale. Wait, so he's he both? Also that so he, he had an inside job look into drop. it before uh, it even dropped. It was a charity drop and a normal NFT So he literally drop. got inside now, info to, to invest into this, bro? In association okay. With one of Mr. How's that even fair? Projects, Team C's saying, quote, right. all proceeds will go towards cleaning up the seas around the world. This was early November 2021. Oh, God, was the team seasoning just a friend then? Account posts it on November 3rd, 2021. Yeah, quote, what the hell? Why are they promoting cryptos on support of the team seas? Then the CEO of Eternity Chain, Nick Rose, confirms in Telegram Jesus. that the drop is supported by Mr. Beast, saying earn and ETH tokens will be accepted for the charity auction, which was slated to last two months. Now, the reason I'm sharing all of this is because one month into this two-month charity auction on November 30th, 2021, the Rocket Fund or Beast Fund or whatever you want to call it, starts selling huge amounts of this earned token. Allegedly, they sold over $2 million. 
while the charity itself oh. Hello, Aaron. You want to move out of the camera? Going on. Now, I know that Aaron, sounds horrible. The camera. It horrible. Oh, it is good horrible. Down, Although I have to tell you, personally, I don't oh, they think get a nice this close was a bad plan aside. to pump a coin with a charity auction. If it was the plan, it was a bad one because the NFT auction was ultimately a flop. But do I also think it doesn't matter because regardless of your intention, selling tokens within a month of your two-month charity auction is wrong, stupid, and unethical? Yes. yes yeah, pretty I much. Yeah, that's. Well. I think that because checks all the more. Stop. Yeah, all the boxes Mr. there, man is and then the they all the boxes whose name is on the website it isn't a fund it isn't a crypto rocket fund it's mr beast's branding i even yep. asked the earn team about this saying quote why did y'all list mr beast instead of rocket fund in your partners investors was that discussed you listen to him as a they partner said, quote we listed him mr beast as a partner and quote yes they accepted that so according to the earn team Mr. Beast knew or should have known that his name was on the line for this investment and partnership. Yep. And yet, this fund, his fund, whatever you want to call it, sold tokens one month after starting a two-month NFT auction for charity. To be fair again, though, it's hard to oversell Which is how weird. bad this NFT auction did. I That's definitely not normal at all. That appears to have sold here, but the bids were made in the earned token, which the fund was selling, and the actual uh -huh. sale of the NFT didn't happen until after the fund sold in November 30th. The transfer happened in December 23rd. So of course, I went to Mr. Beast directly to answer this and see if there was some more context they could provide. There was no response other than the statement we've already read from Mr. Beast that he did not control the trading. Although again... But he said it in the podcast that he did control the tra the, uh, the trading and stuff like that. So it's contradictory. That is a really satisfying answer because we've established Mr. Beast would sometimes direct what to buy and sell to this fund. Exactly. Like crypto punks. Personally, like I said, I don't think this was a pre-planned scheme, but regardless of intentions, if you're the charity guy- It still ended up that way. Yeah. It flops while your fund makes millions of dollars in profits because it's selling the same earn token people could bid on the charity with. That just is awful. And you should feel awful about it. Yeah, um, definitely. Look, now Yikes. I want to move on from that uh, to talking about our final token, Xcash. This is a token you may remember oh, from boy. our investigation. In What's up with these damn tokens of cryptos, partner, man? KSI. But unlike KSI, Mr. Beast was not promoting it a lot on Twitter. In fact, the right. only reason we know Mr. Beast was in the presale is that there were several articles about it bragging about that fact. Once again, Mr. Beast. Oh, so somebody got inside info and figured it out on their own. Instead of the fund itself. And internally to investors, I have to say, this built up a lot of excitement. Not just because Mr. Beast is a huge name, but because XCAD had what's called creator tokens. So the idea to some investors is that, well, if they're investing, Mr. Beast and KSI, what if they were ever to launch creator tokens? That would be massive. And I bring this up because some people might ask, like, what do these affiliations how do they impact people buying these projects? And the right. answer from what I've seen is they actually do impact it quite a lot because well, yeah, people the creators. are anticipating like further involvement and also the idea is like they must not be investing unless they're long-term holders. You can see this in the Telegram chat. Exactly. It became so common. I think because they're rich that their opinion is correct or something like says, that. It's stupid. Here we go again. Another community member asking if there's any possibility of a Mr. Beast KSI token. And meanwhile, by the way, as I think they're going to make them rich by the following them. Hoping for these greater tokens and that they're imminent. Behind the scenes, something entirely different had been happening. Like with Super and Earn, Mr. Beast's fund sold a lot of their XCAD early in 2021 rather than holding their tokens. And this was right. surprising to even the founder of XCAD himself, Oliver Bell, who said they told him they were going to do the opposite. He tells me, quote, hey, so Mr. Beast reached out to me during our pre-sale raise. A group was set up with his team and mm -hmm. we had a call with his team and they said they liked the concept. There was no strings attached to the investment. They did, however, want a lot bigger ticket than what I offered them, which I'm glad I did not fulfill. We discussed not just flipping this token as this can damage projects if people have decent sized tickets. It was my understanding we were aligned on this. However, after listing to which XCAD performed well, there was heavy dumping from a wallet linked to Mr. Beast's team. 
I got in contact with them immediately and asked them why they were selling like this. Yeah, what the now, heck? Oliver so the thumping and dumping. This discussion about flipping tokens and them being aligned about the fact they're not going to flip these tokens so quickly was with Jason. And apparently, Oliver was so upset about what happened, he DM'd Jimmy directly, quote, explaining his team will ruin his reputation. And look, sorry to be a broken record, but yes, yeah. I reached out to Jimmy about this too. And once again, there was and they no didn't response. Besides the yeah, story. they didn't respond. So that kind of screws the guy over because like he didn't want it to be a bad token. He wanted it to actually be a real token, but the guy just pumped and dumped it. And Mr. Beast team did. And he said the message had been deleted on Telegram. So who you believe here is up to you. Oliver yeah. also says, quote, I don't think Jimmy has a bad heart or is a bad person. I think he has genuine interest in the crypto space, but I think the team that handles his crypto is completely clueless. And here oh, on yikes. this last point, that I could also be another point too. Oliver. I don't think oh. that Jimmy's crypto team is clueless. I think they saw an opportunity to make millions of dollars with Mr. Beast's valuable brand. And they yeah. Took it, and they did That's another way too that it could go because I mean, Mr. Beast could have had no shaped, involvement in that. Could have just been his team. Also illegal is probably going to be shaped by oh, our no, unanswered questions and where you fill in those gaps. For example, do you think Mr. Beast knew about the selling that was going on May 12th for the super token? Why did he make that tweet? And then do you think Mr. Beast knew about the charity auction and the selling that was happening on November 30th? And do you think Oliver Bell DM'd Mr. Beast and told him his I think he knew about some of them for sure because he literally so said it, but I don't know about all of them. I hate to leave so many unanswered questions here, but I warned you, this was a complicated story. And a big part of the problem is the guy at the center of this story cannot or will not give more than a heavily lawyered statement through a spokesman who's a crisis management consultant. And let me just right. say it's also frustrating. He's only letting his PR team handle it. So. Zero accountability. Despite the fact Mr. Beast's team knew every major allegation that we're laying out here today, there is no mention of selling while Mr. Beast was tweeting about super tokens. There's no mention of them selling tokens a month after they partnered with a two month charity auction. And because of that, this statement feels very hollow. I think to Mr. Beast and probably to his fund, maybe this is just business. You know, they set out to make a lot of money and, and they, they ended up, money. yeah, they, they ended up getting like, a lot of money. America. They might think this is the biggest Mr. Beast nothing burger since Mr. Beast burger. But oh, look, boy. honestly, I'd agree with yeah, this is if they actually had done a lot this to take without using Mr. Beast. So like an 80% chance this man is a scammer. This fund trades on Mr. Beast's name. As we've seen, they get in pre Or at least his team. His name, uh, Shit. He tweets from his public account. And they're putting his name publicly on projects, websites, instead of a fund. But when things go south, suddenly, oh, Mr. Beast, what? No, I, no liability. Just because he's not sitting there physically pressing the buttons. I don't think that's the way it works. Look, I want to close with the final part of this CryptoPunks podcast we showed you earlier. Because in many ways, I think it's a microcosm of this story. Obviously, I have to say, I'm not making any comments or judgments about the guy who's suing me, who's also in this clip. That's just coincidence. I am only talking about Mr. Beast's reaction. Because as Mr. Beast is talking about Gary V's great CryptoPunks call, there's a moment when the co-host says, hey, maybe instead of Gary V being a genius, maybe it's just the call itself that makes the market. And Mr. Beast kind of defends it. He says, no, that was in February. You know, CryptoPunks didn't pop until the summer. And, you know, I never talked about CryptoPunks until this very moment. Can I ask right. you guys a question? When, when Gary does that call with all these billionaires and uh, eight months or a year later, everybody's like, Gary was right again. <laughs> yeah. Is it possible that he's right because of the call? Do you know what I'm saying? I, I like, think about that Like, a lot. dude, he has all these billionaire market makers in the thing. I think about he that makes a lot. the call, makes the market. By the way, you look around at all the punk owners a, a year later, and you're like, damn, it's all the same mother that were on the call. No, because, bro, there's, there's 10,000 punks, and there's only, like, 30 of us on the call. We can only own and do so much. There's still an entire yeah, yeah, market. Yeah, that's yeah but then again, they can hide artists. those wallets, I think. I don't know. Because that was all back, like, early February. But, like, right. the things didn't pop off till later, and every... Like, oh, he's providing about. timelines now. I mean, I mean, make no mistake, like having such influential people involved with projects, it's not, it can't hurt the ability for the project to, to like, work. Not, you know what you I'm know, saying? 95% of those people didn't even mention it. You know what I mean? Like, right, right, I've right. never talked about it publicly. Yeah, but that last part isn't quite true. The reason we're all here is Mr. Beast tweeted about CryptoPunks. Yeah, he was making tweets about it. Yeah. Back in February of 2021. That's how we found his wallet. So he did talk about that. Someone else talk was about involved it publicly, too. Man. And I would apply the same level of scrutiny oh, to many of the investments we've talked about. 
Was it the genius? A lot of Jason contradictory Burton, statements made by made Mr. Beast. That's what made some look so. Maybe. Or was it the fact that the name they brought to the table was Mr. Beast, one of the most influential and valuable brands in the world? And that's what got them the great deals. That's what got them a bunch of eyeballs. That's what made it so valuable to have his name on these websites. Yep. And maybe that's what made the market. Ultimately, his popularity screwed him, basically. That is absolutely crazy, boys. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Alrighty, so final thoughts. Honestly, uh, Mr. Beast, I don't think necessarily he fully scammed. I think there's some things that he did kind of scam on. There's a good chance that he did, good chance that he didn't. And uh, it's definitely his team. His team definitely did something because there's no way, it, you know, the time stamps of them cashing in, cashing out. It just makes, it's too coincidental. There is absolutely no way that they didn't do that on purpose. Uh, so we're just gonna have to see once more information comes out and if he actually responds himself instead of hiding behind his PR team because at this point he's not really taking any accountability so um, anyways if you guys enjoyed today's video don't forget to drop a like and sub and I'll see you guys in the next reaction later boys